Hello and welcome to another Daily Dose of Insights powered by Container Exchange. My name is Christian and every other day we bring to you the key news, stories and data points that move container markets and hence new business. Today it's Wednesday, so as usual we take a quick look at the charts that move this week um, uh, from a trading and leasing perspective. Let me quickly share my screen to show you a little bit of what I'm talking about. Um, as always, we start with our exchange um, container sentiment index, where we uh, concurrently ask industry participants, stakeholders about their expectations of um, container prices uh, in the weeks to come. Do they expect them to increase, decrease, or stay stable? Um, and uh, out of those answers, we uh, build an index where uh, reading above zero means the industry on average is more pos pos uh, optimistic than, uh, than pessimistic. And as you can see here, the um, sentiment index remains on a very elevated level, um, close to its all-time high of 38. Um, and of course, uh, this is a little bit surprising because um, the overall market sentiment um, is sort of, all, if you look at all economic indicators, inflation, um, interest rates, um, economic growth, etc., cetera, um, and uh, vessel supply and demand um, are pointing into a negative territory. And despite that, the industry remains relatively upbeat. Um, how might that be? Um, if we look at uh, another graph on exchange, um, this is our um, Container Insights, um, a snapshot from our Container Insights product, and where you can essentially analyze um, SOC rates across multiple stretches. And what I've picked here is 40 foot high cube, um, X Shanghai to Houston and Chicago. And on the left-hand side, you can see um, container leasing prices. So those are pickup charges that in this case, the user has to pay um, as a one-off fee um, to be able to use the container on that stretch. And this is January um, uh, 23 to September 23, so year to date um, this year. And as you can see here, since, <clears throat> since about May, um, uh, then when the um, leasing rates uh, bottomed out, we do see an increasing trend here. So um, leasing rates are starting to recover. Um, and you actually also see that in the, the, the per diem rates, so the rental fees that are being charged. So here on the left-hand side, you see Chicago, um, dropping, dropping, dropping all the way through um, sort of May, June, even July, sort of pointing, pointing, pointing into that, um, and then recovering. And actually, the same is true here on um, Houston, um, whereas Houston has a very, very much higher uh, per diem rate, which, which is interesting. It typically indicates that um, leasing companies or traders, one way lessers, are much more interested to get the units back quickly, um, uh, or they are more scared of uh, changing prices, so they do need to um, charge a little bit for the rental fee. And now, again, you might say, why is this the case? Um, how, how can that be? Um, and if you actually look at uh, container purchasing prices um, and the price deltas between um, Shanghai and uh, Houston and Chicago, um, so Shanghai is one location and Houston and Chicago on the, on the other side, you do, you do see um, that this sort of leasing charge trend actually balances out um, all uh, sort of uh, possible product, uh, possible profit uh, margins, at least to a certain extent. Um, so that means that there was a price delta uh, between um, Shanghai and, uh, and the US locations. I mean, this is basically being arbitraged away now by the market and because some uh, smart traders are buying containers in Shanghai, repositioning them over to the US and um, selling them there. Um, so, of course, a little bit of marketing here. Um, you can use all that um, stuff on Insights to really make sure that you improve your decision making, both on the container purchasing as well as on the leasing front, both for users and suppliers. Last but not least, um, quickly a uh, quick look at further headlines of today. Um, just very, very interesting. West Coast ports face hurdles winning back importers, something we've kept talking about over the past a couple of weeks. There was a consistent trend over the past 15, 20 years um, of cargo moving from West Coast ports to, um, so this is US and Canada, West Coast ports to East Coast ports, uh, essentially moving closer, moving the cargo closer to um, the big centers of population. And this trend was sort of increased um, during COVID and then the subsequent um, labor strikes on the US West Coast, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And of course, the question was whether the Panama Canal would um, sort of turn this trend around, but we don't really see this. And now the press is also talking about this. Second um, headline, China-US box rates still expanding despite falling rates. And so why are rates falling, you might ask? 
or there is an increasing capacity being deployed on those trade lanes, especially through newcomers. So you see Seastar, Sinoco, Yangpu, New Shipping, et cetera, et cetera, pushing into that market, lured in by relatively high rates. Um, and now, of course, that supply demand um, devil is at works again um, and pushes down rates because overcapacity um, is showing up in those trades. And then last but not least, um, quick look at the Atlantic trade. Um, no bottom inside for free falling trends, Atlantic rates. Um, I just, it's no, no news here, but I just picked that up because I thought the, the stat was very, very, very interesting that the spot rate of around about $630 um, dollars per 40, 40 unit is down 57% to the same, compared to the same day in pre-pandemic 2019. So even before um, pandemic, we were much, much below um, that, that pre-pandemic rate. Um, that's it from me, from us for today, a little bit longer. Um, hope you um, enjoyed this and I didn't bore you. Um, thanks a lot for tuning in. Um, take care, have a good rest of the week and talk to you all on Friday. Bye-bye.